friends and happy new year. It is now 2022 and we are ready to get going on a whole new year worth of fun art lessons. This one is called Viking Ship and it is inspired by, can you guess? Uh, yep, a Viking ship. And so uh, this is one that some tourists are on. I like that it shows so clearly what these symbols on the side are. We'll talk more about that later. But for now, just to get started, I wanna say that we are gonna be using watercolor paint today. And I wanna talk a little bit about some important things. Number one, the magnets. So guys, I counted them and I have seven magnets left. I have been pushing, trying to get these magnets out there into the world for like a while now. And now there's only seven left. I will probably get more. They won't look exactly like this, um, I plan on getting some each year so that maybe you can start a collection. But anyway, those of you that have these magnets, thank you so much for uh, having your parents contact me or telling me during class. Um, I absolutely love sending them to you. And there's something you can use to hang up your artwork on the fridge or any metal surface like a door, a washer, a dryer, uh, a whiteboard uh, that's magnetic, anything like that will work. So anyway, guys, if you want one, there's only seven left and this one is mine. So that's how it goes. All right, guys, let's start. So for this week's media demonstration video, we're gonna be using watercolor paint, as I mentioned, and I just wanna talk a little bit about some important things. So I, I talk about this kind of stuff a lot. If you're new to my classes or videos, then this will be the first time you've heard this, but if you've heard it a hundred times, it's never a, a bad thing to review, but guys, one of the most important things as an artist is to be prepared, right? So what do I mean by that? Well, I've got my lovely blue mat here, which has seen a lot of art projects, but it protects the table. I've got a cup of water because I'm using watercolor paint today. I have three sizes of brushes. I have small, medium, and large. I don't know if I'll need them all, but I'm prepared, guys, and that's what I want you to do. Get yourself ready before class. I have my watercolor paint ready to roll. Look, I've cleaned my uh, mixing tray. It's nice and dry. And I have some paper towels. In fact, I have two paper towels, just in case I need them. If I don't use them, I'll save them for another day. So for now, uh, we're gonna talk about painting. And uh, this Viking ship is a really fun It's got, uh, drawing. It's got a lot of action, right? It's got the waves. You can kind of almost feel the wind blowing it because the sail is bending. The ship looks like it might be moving. A lot of times when we draw stuff like this, we're not adding people and other things. You are welcome to add those details if you want. Just know they'd be really small and you barely see them. Um, here is that photo I mentioned. I showed you this during the art lesson. It's just a really cool example. This is a one with tourists on it and it's not moving anywhere. You can tell it's just kind of standing still. Uh, the sail's not moving. Uh, it doesn't look like the waves are whipping around it. Um, it's a much more peaceful and calm uh, thing. And the oars are up out of the water. But what I want to do is just talk a little bit about these symbols and these represent different kinds of flags. And so uh, I'm not exactly sure what that means, but I'm going to do some more research and find out. So anytime you're interested in something in an art lesson and you don't know a lot about it, you can find out. Ask your parents to help you research it and learn a little bit more about it on your own. All right, guys. So I do know a lot, however, about using these art supplies. And so I want to get going with that. So I know that I'm probably going to do most of this with my medium brush. There are some little tiny areas that I'll probably need my small brush for. I might even use the big brush for something else. But in the meantime, I'm going to start with my medium brush. So a lot of my students know this, but if you're new, again, this is the lid, but it's also a mixing tray. It's got a couple of ridges in there to divide up the little section. Because my mat is blue, I like to put my mixing tray on top of my paper towel. That's because it's white, right? And then I can see my colors. Another thing that I think a lot of kids don't know about watercolor paint, even though the word watercolor, the word water is in the word, you need quite a bit of water, guys. And so a lot of students will barely get any water onto their watercolor paint and then they'll start painting. And next thing you know, their brush is like having a really bad hair day because they have dried out their brush and pressed really hard on the bristles. You don't wanna do that, guys. You wanna let the water and the brush work together 
and in that way you're going to have plenty of paint so what i did is i've added quite a bit of water to this little cake here it's like a pool now a puddle and so i can lift it out of there easily see how easily i can do that and i'm going to keep on doing that for a couple of minutes well i shouldn't say minutes i should say seconds but what i also want to do is rinse my brush out in between see how i've rinsed it out now i'm going to start adding some water into my black now black is a very, very intense color. You don't need a lot of black to make something darker. But what I want to create is something that's kind of like a dark red. So I'm gonna add more red to this. See how I'm rinsing my brush out first? I'm gonna take some black and I'm gonna mix it in there. So what I wanted to create was sort of a deep, dark reddish color. And so it's almost purple. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually create a little bit of a shadow on this and so i'm not going to do all of this in uh real time meaning i'm going to do some time lapse here i just wanted to get started and show you a trick here so by putting that darker color right there i am letting it sink into the paper that's another thing i think a lot of new artists don't think about whether they're young or old they don't think about the fact that the, the material is sinking into the paper, the paper is absorbing it. And so the longer that just sits there, the more intense that color can be. You can do a layer on top of a layer later, but we're gonna let that first layer sink in. I'm gonna go back to my red now, and I'm going to create another puddle. You see how this little divider is separating these two colors? That's on purpose. That's what I'm trying to do, guys. All right, so now I have a really red color compared to that dark one but I want it to be lighter. So what am I gonna do to make it lighter? There's no white. Oh my gosh, what do you do? Well guys, you have water. So just add water. So by adding water, I am making it lighter. You can tell that it's lighter because you can see it. You can tell that this has sunk in a little bit. So I'm gonna now go over it with my lighter color. And the lighter color is gonna mix a little bit with the darker color, but it's not going to mix totally. And it's going to show up as a little bit of a shadow and yes i am doing this on purpose yes this example shows white and red stripes you can do whatever you want guys this is just an example if you wanted to do this with blue or purple you could take whatever color you want and mix it with a little bit of black to do that shadow we're going to talk more about that as we paint more and more on this but these are just our first layers of color and as you can see it looks pretty cool now I'm gonna take a little bit of red directly from the, this little puddle. This is really red. See how much redder it is? And I'm just gonna add a little bit now like this. And I'm gonna do that on every other one. Whoops, with just red. And this is already wet from the other one being on there, right? So I'm basically doing wet on wet right now. So that is a technique for watercolor paint that gives it, whoops, I accidentally did all of them. Well, that's just fine. It's called a happy accident. So I'm gonna just let that sort of rest right now and sort of sink in. I like the way that looks. The water is going to move the paint around. It's gonna look really cool and excited. So once you have that, just let it sit there. Don't mess with it, don't touch it, let it dry. That way the water can work its magic and you'll see later what I'm talking about. So the other thing I have to tell you is just make sure you're not painting one thing right next to another when it's wet. There, is, there are a lot of parts on this drawing. So for example, there's no reason why I should be working on my clouds or my sky right now. I can let this sail dry and work on like the ship or the water or the mountains that are not touching the sail. I can do things that are not touching the sail while it dries. Every second that is in the air and the paper is soaking up that paint, it's drying. But if you put wet paint next to wet paint, you're gonna have this effect on your whole painting. Now, of course, if that's what you want, go for it. But if you're trying to do what I'm doing today, please follow my instruction. All right, guys, I'm gonna go into time-lapse and it already looks cool. I love the way it looks already. I hope you do too. Um, and uh, I will just see you on the other side.
Well, guys, I think this turned out so cool. I had a lot of fun doing this. A um, couple of things I want to point out to you that you may have noticed while you were watching me do this in time lapse. A couple of things. Um, I never ended up using my large brush, so I'm just going to set that aside. I don't need it for today. Um, I did use my small and my medium brush. I rinsed them out really well when I was done. They are ready for me next time. I'm also going to put those away. Um, you can see that I used my paper towels quite a bit. And, and mostly what I used them for was to clean my uh, mixing tray in between colors. There was different colors I had to mix. This in and of itself is almost like its own piece of art. You know, you can let this dry and you can cut these into shapes and you can make like uh, things to hang in your window, guys, that are look like stained glass. That's another thing. It's a, sort of a no waste, low waste kind of way to use up something instead of throwing it in the garbage. It doesn't go into the landfill. It's really too pretty for that anyway. I did use my other paper towel to, to blot, and blotting is something that's not wiping, right? We're not wiping. Blotting is when you go straight up and straight down. You lift it, you press it down again, and that way it's soaking up the water, but it's not rubbing it or smearing it or smudging it, and that is important. Those are why my paper towels got covered with paint. Um, you can see that my paint water is now a color that doesn't look too appetizing, but uh, the Point is, guys, you do not have to change your paint water out every couple of seconds here. It's okay. The paint water is really watered down paint. It's not going to affect the colors that much, okay? So please don't waste your time. Some people get into a habit of being like, oh, I got to get up. I got to go get this. I got to go get that. But that's why I'm asking you guys to be prepared ahead of time and be ready to sit down and just focus for the 20 minutes or 30 minutes it might take to finish your drawing. When you do that, you're giving yourself and your brain a break from everyday life, and you're also relaxing. Your heart rate goes down, your breathing gets more relaxed, and you go into a state of just a very calm, like flow-like state, which is really good for you. It's very healthy. It's good for everyone, no matter how old or how young you are, guys. Um, so back to this, uh, I'm going to leave this open. These are all wet. Um, one thing you can do is if they're all mixed together, you can just kind of soak up some of that extra paint with your paper towel, um, like the yellow, for example. But the rest of these can just sit and dry overnight. If you close them up now, they're going to stay gooey and they don't dry as well because there's not as much air evaporating the water. So leave it open overnight. It'll be ready for you when you're ready for it you can pour your paint water down the drain. Uh, like I said, if you enjoy these paper towels, you can save them, let them dry flat. Uh, and once they're dry, you can even make them flatter by putting them under a heavy book. And then you can cut them out and make sort of stained glass objects to hang in your window, just for fun. It's a good way to use and reuse something instead of throwing it away. So real quick to finalize this drawing, uh, I just want to say that these things, I kind of made some up as I went along. Um, I know that they represent flags. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, this one looks like it belongs to uh, the Easter Bunny, but uh, that's okay. That's why art is fun. You can do it any way you want to. Uh, it can be a mixture of real things and imaginary things. You guys have wonderful imaginations, and it's really fun to make it up as you go along. I did on purpose make my mountain kind of an orange and purple because I knew I was going to make this guy's head green and I know that this color stands out against that color. What you want to avoid guys is like saying okay I'm going to have a purple mountain and a purple dragon head. You don't want to do that. Uh, you want to make sure things stand out and have contrast. Contrast means that one thing stands out against another. Um, also, I went ahead and I used lots of blues and greens and I didn't want it to be the same blue and green I knew I was going to use in this guy. Um, I called it a dragon, but I think it's more like a sea serpent, actually. It's really cool. Um, anyway, guys, as you notice, hopefully I used a little bit of darker brown on the bottom half of the wood and I used a darker blue on the bottom half of the waves and a darker purple on part of the mountains. And the same thing was on the sail where we started. And when you do that, it just makes it look really cool. Like it's active and it's alive and it's it's beautiful. So that's it for today, friends. I hope you had a great time. I know I did. I look forward to working with you every week and I hope to see your artwork. So have your family take a picture of you with your artwork at home and send it to me. If you're doing these with a video or if you are a virtual student, Otherwise, I will see you in class, guys. See you next time.